Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Groundhog Day, take two. Everything works. We've got a little bit of a leaky poo on the floor. So, second brew day of um, 2021. There we go. It was the flu. The condenser flu was the bucket wasn't under because I pulled this pipe out yesterday. Right then, so this fermenter needs sanitizing at some point today. This has got cleaner in it, so we're going to open these two and let that circulate through that pipe. It's been doing the plate chiller all since four o'clock. Did we set the thing to come on? I think so. So that's been cleaning, so we need to give it a rinse and we need to mash in and when we finish mashing in what we will do I'll turn that off when we finish mas mashing in in fact we'll have it like that then we can rinse out the boil kettle give it a quick hit with acid and then rinse it out again ready for the takeoff hopefully we don't have any issues with the underback today fingers crossed Right, we're coming up to the end of the underlet and I'm going to zoom out and just let you see, there we go, see how this goes. So this bad boy is going to mix all this mash up for us. Now what do you reckon to them apples? That is so much more convenient. So let's take a temperature reading. <clears throat> We're looking for 66 degrees. Now I just left the tap on on the HLT by mistake. So a little bit of cold went into the HLT when I was transferring. So we might be just a little tea the top underneath the 66 that we want today. We're actually looking at that, I don't know if you're going to pick it up on the camera. 66.4 there. Let's come over here. 66.2. Come down here. 66.5. 3, 1, 66. <laughs> Bouncing around a little bit. 66.3. 66.4. 66.5. Again, it's a cold day today. Oh, 70 degrees over there. That's where most of the water come, tends to come up, actually. So we'll give it another mix. I'll just close the outlet. We'll give it another mix, and we'll come back and test it again. So what wants to happen when you've got that on full tilt is it wants to pull it down out your hands because it's pulling obviously the mash up so you do have to fight it a little bit so I just learned to prop my elbows on the corner of the mash tun and just let the weight go straight through my forearms it's a little bit easier on the biceps that way but I'll tell you what it's a million times easier than the old fashioned way of mixing Right, so we're about a degree high actually, after all that mixing, so I'm quite willing to put a splash of cold in there, just to bring that degree down. Sometimes if it's really cold weather, I'll tend to leave it. Just because it might drop a degree naturally. I don't think it will today. 
So we'll just add in a bit of coal straight from the mains. seven litres thereabouts. And we're mashed in for two minutes past ten, which ain't bad considering I had to go and fill the car up with diesel this morning and have an egg sandwich, that was nice. So 65.6 65 65.7 65.8 65.6 I bet you if I go really deep about over here, 66 where it was hot so very similar to yesterday, we got about 66, 65.7 to 66.2. But yeah, 65.9, 8, 65 I don't know if you can see that, 65.9. That's good enough for the girls I go out with, boys and girls. So we'll pop this away. I will adjust the camera for your viewing pleasure. How's that? See if we can capture pretty much everything there. So I want to firstly disconnect the cable from the extension. I need an extension at the minute for this, but what I plan to do in the future is just to extend this cable. It only needs an extra three feet. So, on the floor, next to the drain, rinse off the stainless steel mixing paddle that we made before Christmas, or was it after? I can't remember. Then this lifts nicely over there for now, until we get a permanent place for it. Which will probably include hanging it up somewhere. And we're going to put the mash tun to bed. And the next job is either a bucket of acid to the fermenter, the fermenter, the boil kettle, sanitize the plate chiller, dump that acid out, then we're ready for the bowl off and sparge when it happens. Trialing a new system. So the underback is on a white rose milk crate, maybe? I don't know. I have to lift it up, so hopefully the pump will now prime, which I think it is doing, which is actually wonderful news. Because that was the problem that we had yesterday, the pump not priming. And then also, pulling off for the vol off, meant that we kind of compacted the grain bed because it probably went too fast. So I've just cracked the handle slowly there. Remember this contraption is meant to give me more free time and prevent a stuck mash. Yesterday it did exactly the opposite on both counts. So if I learn how to dial this in and set it up correctly straight off the bat, hopefully it should do what it's designed to do. So it just takes a little bit of thinking about, and I think just slowly feeding in, not creating a, any suction on the grain bed. This is where having a manometer on the side will come in handy, but I'm not going to be fitting one of those. Just using a little bit of caution should do the job. That slow trickle in is only to set up the grain bed. 
So we'll do the vol off. And once the grain bed is in position, right, nice and fluffy and light, and we have a level of liquid above it, then we'll use the Valentine arm to maintain that level, hopefully keep it where we want it. Obviously, I can't go any lower than this crate unless I kind of turn it on its side, which is doable. But I'm hoping that that's about right, looking at the level there. You know, we're not far away. Um, so yeah, if we get it set up and we establish that level in the grain bed, then hopefully the, the grant will be able to operate at a fast enough pace not to compact that grain bed anymore. I think its initial conditions dictate the path of to which whether the grain bed is going to compact or not so we'll start slow and then we'll start to speed up as the sugars come out of solution of course the whole medium is getting thinner and lighter as we extract these sugars so it kind of makes sense that way and I've started the vol off a little early as well we're only 30 40 minutes into the mash so yeah we're probably 10 minutes early on the vol off not a big deal, but I want to save time on it today. Bag of goodies, check it out. Yakima Chief hops, American hops from the Pacific Northwest. Look at those little beauties. Oh, yes, Simcoe, five kilos. I think we've got another two here as well. Yeah, another one. Oh, hold on, did I buy four? I can't remember. Oh my goodness. I'm sure it's five kilograms. 20. 20 kilos of Simcoe. All the money. And then what's in this box? What's in the box, Angelos? Let's see if we can get this open one handedly and have a look inside. I'll just put the knife away so I don't remove a finger by accident. Here we go. Of course, we've got 500 gram block of Sanders, we've got a 500 gram block of LAX, which is their WLP001 or USO5 equivalent, I believe, and we've got 500 gram block of Einstein, which is for lager, Pilsner type beers. So fun is about to commence in 2021. Mash complete, transfer complete, boil almost, underback in the King Canal. I'm sick of it. I've given it two days. I actually reverted back to my old manner of doing it and oh, it was just so much simpler. So until we get time to print around again, I'm just going to chuck it upstairs and... Uh, Put that one on the back burner, I think. Yeah, I wasn't pleased at all. Meant to make your day easier. Anyway, it's a sound concept. It just seems I can't make it work with this setup. So there we go. Just draining what's left out of the mash tun so when the uh, farmer comes to collect the grain, it's not heavy, sopping wet stuff. And I've also taken delivery of some more hops. So we had 20 kilograms of Simcoe this morning. And I've also got, uh, I think, 25 or 30 kg of mosaic. But this is the BBC, no, not British Broadcaster, and no, not that Pornhub search term either, but um, it's a pure hop pellet, and they have less vegetative 
matter in than the T90s. So you don't need as much, but we'll be still putting as much in, so we should get a bit more of a punch in the aroma. Also picked up some Halatau Mittelfra, which I'm going to be using in possibly a lager with our little friend, the Einstein yeast, just there. Oh, it's not Christmas, by the way. That's what Abigail did. And she said, because my name's Chris. Merry Christmas. Funny, eh? She's like that. Anyway, while this has been coming up to a boil, in fact, I better keep an eye on that. 99. It's 99. I can just smell it in the air. You can normally smell the uh, DMS boiling off. So we'll just drop that down to 60% so it doesn't catch me out. I'll show you what I've been doing. So I've hooked up all the fermenters again, tidied up the pipe work, that's very neat. Robbie Williams showed me how to do that with uh, insulation tape. So what I'm going to do is tidy all the pipe work up and then I'm going to bring the foam gun in from home. The one I've got is knackered. I've got one at home and I'm going to foam along the top of all these connectors. Let's just zoom back out a bit so I'm in shot. Um, fermenters uh, now one th were one through three, now six, seven and eight are all working perfectly well. We're just draining this one off actually so while I'm here I may as well just do that hadn't I? And uh, push some of the caustic out. But yeah, to gain access, I've hinged the stairs. What a fantastic idea. So just by lifting them up, I can get to the four chillers at the back. That one at the end isn't doing anything. But these three are providing cool for these three fermenters here. One, two, three. So in order for me to service them, fill them up with glycol, which I need to do, and set them, I can just whip out four screws in the top deck, lean it back, and I can get in there to work on them all. And then also, I can just change the temperatures or keep an eye on the temperatures this side by just moving a pallet here or there. But they are pretty much set and forget, folks. Remember, these live under the bar in pubs, and they often get really neglected. Nobody kind of vacs out the cooling fins or anything, so they're bulletproof. I say that, look, and they'll all break down next week. So that's one of the jobs that I've been doing. Sorry for the jerky camera work. Uh, anyway, we'll cut back when we do something else a little bit more interesting. So I've just had the pilot kit outside, hit it with a jet wash while I had half an hour, had a bit of mildew on it here and there, so I've just blasted it all away. It looks brand new now, which is not surprising considering I've only used it like five times. Ah, money well spent. I'm waiting till we move out and I get a massive garage. I'll be able to take it home then and have it in my, uh, in my home brewery yet again. Oh. One can only dream. So yeah, brought all the pipe work over here. This is what I'm talking about, look. Some little bits. I've got a couple of buckets of bleach though, not bleach, um, Chloroquest. So I'll probably just drop those fittings straight into here and just let them soak. Minus the O-rings for the cam locks so they don't like it. They swell up. Unless you've got silicone ones, then you're kosher. So I'll drop all the steel work in there and just let it soak, probably overnight. And then I think it's about time I dug out the mash tun for our friendly farmer. That looks relatively nice and drained. I might even take a bucket of grain home for the chickens tonight. They'll love it. Gemma's come to do the orders and she's ruining my uh, tea for tonight. What the hell? 
Well, Keto's definitely out the window, eh? <laughs> Big difference today, folks. Finished before five. That's mainly because I kicked that can down the bloody street. So, all cleaned up. Hose down, readings taken, numbers hit. Caustic in the tank, ready for the morning research. HLT, timer set. Gonna come on first thing. I need to now go over to Screwfix in Harworth to pick up some tools for the floor. We're gonna try a resin. Uh, but first I'm going to be grinding the floor, or trying to. <laughs> we shall see how it goes. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go and pick those bits up. That's for another vlog though, not this one. So there we go ladies and gents. Second brew of 2021 in the bag. See you for the next one.